What's up guys? Today we're talking about every DIYer and custom builder's kryptonite, bump steer, and how you can eliminate bump steer on your project once and for all. So stick around. Okay, so on this project, I do have power steering. This is my steering rack here, and you can see the power steering unit that is hooked up underneath there. The main reason why bump steer happens is because we have differences with mounting locations between the upper A-arm, the lower A-arm, and then also where our tie rods come into the steering system. These three ball joints here, here, and here, and then also on the inboard side, are all going to play a key role in the way that bump steer works. These steering knuckles that I'm using are out of Wildcat and this one is going to be relatively easy to work with here because these are a pretty well designed steering knuckle. But when I say it's well designed, what I mean by that is if you start drawing intersecting lines between the upper ball, the lower ball, and then where your mount point is here, you'll notice that the steering joint is about in line and centered with these two pivot points here. So this side is already good. Even though this doesn't currently have any bump steer in it, because I'm using these long spacers, the last time I had it out, which was at Durham Town, I did bend this bolt. So now the steering is no longer aligned properly, and I knew that that was going to be a problem using such long spacers. It, since this is a single shear, what I have to do is get this ball joint up, mounted as close to this knuckle as possible. So that way it cannot bend and change the geometry of my steering. The other part of the equation, of course, is the inboard part. And what you'll notice here on the geometry of the inboard side is that we also have our pivot points here, and then we have our lower pivot point for the lower control arm here. Now we can do the same thing. We can draw an imaginary line, so then the ball end of the steering tie rod needs to intersect that line. Now, if I were to mount this ball all the way up here on the knuckle itself, what would that actually look like? Well, what you'd see is the steering tie rod, which right now mimics the same angle here of my A-arms. What that would do is that would take the angle of my tie rod and it would bring it up like this. And so as the suspension collapses, these all extend. The whole front of the buggy gets wider and what we need is we need the tie rod to extend exactly as much as our upper and our lower. So the main takeaway, the key thing here is we need the A-arms and the tie rods to extend at the same rate. This is one quick fix that you can use if you have an existing project and you need to correct any bump steer. Just by putting more of an angle here, by lowering the pivot point here, then that means that this tie rod extends more the lower the suspension gets. So a lot of times you can take a project like this where you can see that I'm nowhere close to the tie rod being the same length, probably another five or six inches too far inboard this way. So because that's so far inboard, if it's not intersecting the line in, if you were to draw between these two pivot points, the way that you can correct that is by lowering your point here so that way the tie rod extends the further down the suspension collapses. So then why would I be changing it if that angle already addresses the bump steer issue? Well, a couple of things. First of all, because this is a single shear, all I'm gonna do is I'm going to bend these bolts under too much tension if I hit something with the wheel. And also, that's a weak point I could crack because there's so much leverage on it, I also run the risk of cracking that knuckle. So that was always just kind of a temporary fix. So in order to get this thing fixed correctly, now that I've got a little bit more time to work on the project, it's actually bringing out these pivot points and intersecting over here. Height-wise, this is gonna stay about that same height, and I just need a wider bracket here. And what I'll do is I'll place it right about there where it's intersecting those. And then of course I'll be using shorter tie rods. So then what I can do is then I can bring this, this guy up and mount it to the bottom there. And that will give me the correct angle that I need to stay consistent with both the upper and the lower control arms. So what that means is I'm going to have to build some kind of custom plate. And uh, that's what we're doing today. I'm gonna to build 
something into this. I may even weld something into the rack here in order to get my pivot points out and intersect the upper and the lower control arm pivots. Alright, so my plan here is I've got a piece of angle just because my hardware store doesn't have anything thick enough. I was just going to weld the square tube right to the bottom of it, but I don't have square, so I'm going to cut this in half. That should give me, this is a three foot piece, yeah, so that'll give me 18 inches. And then I'll just basically weld that square in so it'll look a little kind of like that. I'll weld it up here. So, let's get to cutting. I just got these in the mail today. These are the new tie rods. These are 18 inch tie rods. I think the old ones were probably 27 inch. These high misalignment spacers are really cool. I mean, look at how, look at how far that extension you can go on that. It's pretty nice. Please tighten up. Please tighten up. Please snug now. Oh my goodness. Starting to wear me out. All right. So now, if my measurement's correct, when the wheel is over there, so this is with the wheel centered. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it would appear that I nailed it like couldn't possibly have gotten that closer. Oh, I don't know if I even showed you guys how this came out. So this is the, the steering rack I was working on, finished now that it's painted. Of course, I've got our mounting post holes here and on the end there. The next day. So I got our tie rods threaded in here. All right, and I got my new steering rack into place. What I need to figure out right now is if I need to trim down the length on either side. Now these are as short as I can possibly make them. So the upper pivot, the lower pivot, and now the steering pivot are all in an intersecting line there. Same thing with the other side. So now with the shocks disconnected, what I can do is I can lower this thing down, and what we'll see is we'll either observe, well, one of three things. Either these will tow in, they'll tow out, or they'll stay the same. Sorry about the mess in the garage, guys. Got a lot of projects going on all at once here. So I'm filming about four different videos as we speak. So first things first, let's see if we tow in or if we tow out. All right, so first things first, let's see. We should be all the way. Yeah, we're off the ground, or just about off the ground. Let me drop this down and see what these tires do. Huh. Oh no, okay. We are slightly towing out, just slightly. Okay, so to recap, if you're getting tow out as the suspension collapses, one way to solve this, the way that I'm gonna be doing this, if that tie rod lengthens more, so if we put more angle into the tie rod, we can either lift this side up or we can lower that side over here down. So, since it's just a little bit of toe out, I'm gonna start by, I think these are half inch. These should be, yeah, these should be half inch spacers. Now I had some really big spacers in there before. Oh yeah, these are the, these are the guys I had in there before. 
but that was with the wrong length tie rod. So now I'm just going to go to a little short one like that. Get a good baseline measurement here. See three and a half in the rear. So we've got just shy of three inches of toe out. So let's add that spacer and remeasure. All right, so we have 61 in the rear. Yeah, 61 in the front. Actually, just less than 61. It's about an eighth inch less than 61 in the front. So we'll drop this down again. Now, of course, we're looking for less than that three inches. So now I'm at 64 and a half on the rear. 64 and a half, and we're at 65 in the front. So we've got a slight toe out happening. These are 4.3, or 0.43 is what I mean that they are. If I add one washer to them, they become right, right a half inch, uh, 0.51 with one washer. So I'm gonna add the spacer plus one washer to both sides. A few moments later. We're at zero, and then as I raise up the suspension, we neither toe in or out. And that is how you remove bump steer the correct way. And of course, now I don't have to worry about these bolts bending, or if they do bend a little bit, um, I could just replace them, put new bolts in there. You can see they're fairly short. I don't think we could put enough leverage on that to actually bend that bolt at this point. Right now, to bend that bolt with that angle, we would probably be closer to snapping this arm than we would be to actually bending that bolt. So that'll work. As always, I'm Rick with Dirt Gear TV. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.